Hi and welcome. Today I want to talk to you guys about organic chemistry. So organic chemistry is a subject that a lot of people find really scary. And it is. It's pretty challenging. But hopefully after this segment, you won't find it as scary anymore. So today I'm going to talk to you specifically about the melodic ester synthesis. This is, the melod this is an overview of the melodic ester synthesis. First, we're going to use this base to deprotonate. Second, this alkyl, we're going to use the alkyl halide. And lastly, we're going to do a decarboxylation step. First of all, we're going to look at the melonic ester. So we're going to specifically look at the alpha carbon here. The alpha carbon is important because this is where the deprotonation will occur. The alpha carbon has two hydrogen bonds right here. And the first thing we're going to do is use our sodium ethoxide base. We're using sodium ethoxide rather than other bases such as sodium hydroxide because this will not interfere with the target re reaction due to its similar, you know, as you can see it's pretty similar. So first of all, the base will come in and deprotonate the hydrogen. The electrons in the bond to the hydrogen will then go to the alpha carbon. After that step, it will cause an enolate to form here, where there's a negative charge on the alpha carbon. Due to the negative charge on the alpha carbon, the enolate will then act as a nucleophile and attack an electrophile. Where is the electrophile, you might ask? The electrophile is here on the alkyl halide. It is this carbon right here. This carbon is an electrophile because of the bromine that is bonded to it. Because bromine is a very electronegative atom, it will pull the electron density towards it, leaving this carbon with a partially positive charge. And since it has a partially positive charge, it will act as a good electrophile. So here, the alpha carbon will then attack, being the nucleophile that it is, the electrophile on the alkyl halide. Then the electrons here on this bond will leave and go to with bromine. Now you no longer have your enolate and you have this added alkyl. And here's the bromine in this solution with all of its electrons. After that step, your next step is decarboxylation. There are many ways in which you can decarboxylate. One way we learned in class is through saponification. But another way that is most popular is through heat and acid. So after heat and acid, let's say this will fall off and then you will have left the, al the added alkyl and your carboxylic acid. And this is the end product of your melonic ester synthesis. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned a little bit more about melonic ester synthesis. So for your benefit, maybe look through the reaction, make sure you understand it. And something very important in organic chemistry is to count your carbons. So while you're looking through, why don't you make sure I have all my carbons correct. As you can see, OCHEM really isn't that scary. I think that was a lot scarier than learning organic chemistry. Well, hopefully you guys learned a lot, and don't be afraid of it. Thank you.